Hi everyone, it's me Minnie Blake of the Skies. I am here to do some coffee dyeing. So I have my bottle, spray bottle with coffee dye inside of it. It's actually half a pot of water with seven tea bags in. And then I put like three tablespoons of instant coffee. So it made this much and then some more refills. And I'm gonna be coffee dyeing in my f new favorite way. Well, it's not really new. I've been doing it for like a year probably, but it's stencil coffee dyeing and it's much quicker than putting the papers into the oven and you get cool designs. Um, and I learned this from Cindy T on YouTube. Um, I don't know how I came across her video, but in the last video, or maybe it was a TikTok, I um, I mentioned her, and if I did this before on YouTube, I probably linked her too. I will try to find her video and link it. But I love coffee dyeing the traditional way, which is in the oven, but it's a lot more involved. So I really liked doing it this way. And what I what we're gonna be using are stencils. So I just need one gloved hand, hopefully. <laughs> and what I'm gonna be coffee dyeing is not plain paper, but I'm gonna be coffee dyeing some papers that I have printed onto. I think most of these are tailor-made journals. And so I print um just like the like letters and receipts, I think. Um, I'll link Taylor May journals down below as well. I love these papers of hers, and the cool thing about coffee dyeing them after you've printed is that the colors bleed, and then sometimes you get really pretty colors. So let's go ahead and try doing that. I also have some messed up printing like this or like this where it's run out of ink that I'm going to coffee dye as well and I have some papers that are legal sized papers and they have that white end that did not print onto so I will I'm going to try coffee dyeing that side also what I love doing is um, layer printing so this is again tailor-made journals and I've layered it over different um, texts and writing and things like that. So let's go ahead and get started. I got a bunch of stencils from Amazon and I've used these in the past and we're going to be using them again. So. I'm just stirring up my drink. I'm drinking some lemonade right here. All right. So typically, I just put down a sheet and I put it on the bad side or the blank side. So there is something printed here, but on the back, it ran out of ink. So we're gonna coffee dye that. And I just put like a plastic container with a grocery bag here. One of those like produce bags to, so I don't have to wash the plastic. So I am laying down the paper. And then I'm gonna lay down a stencil. And I am going to spray it. Now your spray bottle needs to have a very fine mist. So I tend to, I use toner every day. And usually the bottles for toner have a very fine mist. So I hoard these. So once that's sprayed, I'm going to take this and put the bad side down. Oh, shoot. 
and it that this is where the good print is I think so it's what you lay down on the over the top so once I do that I take my next sheet of paper and I lay the bad side up and then I lay a stencil over it and then spray. And then lay the bad side down to absorb the coffee. And you press so that the design comes through. Then we take another sheet, lay the bad side down. Oh no, lay it up because this side absorbed it. I hope I'm not being confusing. <laughs> Let me know if this is confusing or if you have any questions. And what I love about this coffee dye method is that it does not take long to dry because you're not submerging it with coffee. Now I think I will have a problem um, with the legal size paper because this isn't long enough. So I'm gonna have to decide what I wanna do about that. Now, I don't like this part of the design, so I'm gonna avoid that area. Now this has an interesting um, ink pattern. So we'll see what happens with this one. Okay, now I'm not going to do it on this side. I'm going to do it on the back side because nothing was printed on the back. Now, I think I'm just going to quickly do the edges because I don't want the edges to be white. And then let's go ahead and do the design. I am getting ready to start some journals so that's why I'm doing this because I want some coffee dyed papers although I do have excess because every time I do it I really just do a lot a lot at once all right so to speed this up I'm just gonna get this next sandwich ready so this side is going to be going down on top of the stencil and this one is going to be ready for the next set. So I don't use coffee dyed paper in all of my journals. I mainly use them in the um, in the one, the kind where it's kind of grungy and lots of textures. I've done that a few times now. But I do have a lot of coffee dyed paper. And yet I still tend to hoard. <laughs> I love it when the ink runs because it sometimes creates the prettiest colors.
if you guys see me avoiding certain areas, it's because I don't really love the design in those areas. You see how the design comes through so clearly? I think I'm gonna use a bigger die because this is so light. This can go really quickly. I usually do um, a few sets. So I'll go through all the stencils I have and then I will pull out the stencils and then set the papers aside and these papers they're not going to be that wet because there's not that much coffee on them so I'll set that aside especially on a hot day which it is starting to warm up here so I set it outside if I can for a day and it's usually good and even if I set it inside it usually dries pretty quickly but I like putting it in the sun because it gets more crinkly I'm gonna put another stencil and we just keep trucking along All right, now I think I'm gonna um, switch to composition paper. I love dyeing composition paper because it's very thin paper and it makes a really cool texture. So what I do, this is composition notebook I got from a neighbor. This, it was their kids um, leftovers from the school year last year and I just cut the threads in the middle pull out the sheets And I also like it because it's long. It's like a really big sheet of paper. Um, so. Let me rearrange this. I think what I'm going to do is just do this for now. I have some dies that are smaller, I mean some stencils that are smaller, so it's perfect for these stencils. I mean, I am not thinking. <laughs> I have some stencils that are smaller, so it's perfect for this size paper. Now it doesn't seem to be absorbing as well. Okay, let's just leave it and move on to the next one. I'm going to try to spray a little more this time. Although I think these 
these stencils don't work as well as the bigger ones. Let's try a bigger stencil this time. I do want to get a session of um, regular coffee dyeing, like in the oven. I do want to do that before the weather gets too hot. I think it's supposed to get pretty cold next week here, so I might just do that. Although when I do that, it takes me like like four hours just to to dry them in the oven. but I do make a lot. And I usually do that like once a year. switch to these papers right here. I'm going to be concentrating on only one end. Grab the next one. actually be interesting is alternating them so that a plain paper comes up here on this side because it might absorb some of the ink. Um, I might do that next time. But let's continue on like this. So I'm putting this side up and all I have are small stencils left. So let's just go for it. Let's just try that. Let me get my next piece ready. I actually like the roses better, so let's put that on side that is going to have a better chance. And then even if the print doesn't come through so well, um, it still gets copy dyed, so it's still good. It still works. Right. 
Now this is kind of wrinkled, so I'm just gonna spray it. this is going to do, but let's try. I'm just going to spray on the outside a little bit. And the good thing about spraying on the outside is it seeps down below to the other layers. going to just lay that down. That one actually did pretty good. All right. Now, I might as I have one more. I might as well try it. So lay this down. I'll spray the edges a little bit. Actually, Spray the edges. See where the, hmm. I'm just trying to see how I need to tilt it. Alright, let me get the next page ready. And Kind of avoiding the butterflies and dragonflies because I don't really like that. And we're gonna lay this down. Those actually do really good. All right. Wow, I've been spraying for 22 minutes already. Now I'm gonna show you guys what I do next. I'm going to take off my gloves. I'm just going to get another plastic bag here so that it doesn't make a mess. Um, I'm just going to grab a produce bag, another produce bag. I think what I'm going to do is cut it open. And I think I should put my glove back on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna pull all the stencils out and let the papers dry and that way I can reuse the stencils. But I'm gonna start with the bottom. So I'm gonna flip this over. And then we can start to see how things are turning out. Now I'm going to move the tray out of the way so that you guys can see me putting the papers here on this bag. And this is where I'm just going to lay it and let it dry. All right. So let's go ahead and pull the papers off. There's going to be some interesting colors there. I like 
I like these greens right here, but I don't really like the red. And of course you can't control this, <laughs> but that's why it's so interesting to see what's gonna happen. Actually, I need a place to put my stencils as well. So let me move this to have room for my stencils right here. next one I just love how um, the bleeding on the writing it makes it look really cool so there's that one So it does give more of a red tinge on the side that ran out of ink. I guess that side, it didn't run out of red. That's why it's coming through, I'm guessing. So if anything, if I still don't like the color, I could coffee dye it again because then it'll still have the design. All right, so you know the, the paper that lies on top of the stencil? That's where you get the clearest print, like this one. This was laying on top of the stencil, like after you spray it. So that's where the design comes through the most. This one was laying on the bottom. Oh no, this one was laying on the top, I think. Yeah, this one was laying on the top and this one was laying on the bottom. So you get a positive print, I guess you could say, and a negative print. But those both turned out good. Sometimes one side doesn't turn out as well. So I think that's, the one that's on the top. No, that's the one that's on the bottom. Sorry, I'm getting confused. <laughs> but this is the one that's on the top and it comes out better because I, I flipped it, right? And some of these stencils are better than others in how they come through. So in my next video, I will be um, prepping papers for the upcoming journals, which is gonna be circus theme inspired, but it's gonna it's gonna be kind of abstract. So it'll have like that kind of feel, but I'm not gonna make it super carnival or circus themed. But what we're gonna do in the next video is prep the papers and before that though, I'll come back and show you guys the result after these have dried. That way you guys can see once it dries how the ink looks. Okay, now we're getting to the composition papers. 
Wow, that's pretty. Wow. I like that a lot. Now I'm afraid that if I close it, it might muddy it up. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this composition paper that whoever used this, they like tore out one side. So I'm just going to sandwich it in between. And I guess what's happening with the composition paper is that it's not really soaking in as much as other paper, like printer paper. Or at least that's what it seems like. And I'm going to try to dry off the stencils too because these ones with the um, with the composition paper, they don't seem to be absorbing much and it's really staying on the stencil. So I'm going to dry it off too, which creates more coffee dyed paper. <laughs> so this is where the fine mist is really important or else it wouldn't leave that um, that design because the stencil is so small. So I'm really going to make sure stays in place so it doesn't move any of that design. All right. That one turned out nice. All right, but I'm just gonna continue doing this. I don't want this video to get too long, especially because I'm just, I'm doing the same thing over and over again. I didn't even see that they they drew on that page. <laughs> um, but I think I am gonna go and finish this off camera. And like I said, in the next video, we're going to be prepping papers. But before we prep the papers, I will show you guys the end product of um, this coffee dyeing after it dries and then you guys can see also um, what happens to the pages that I'm putting in the middle like even the pages that I'm using to clean off this the coffee dye or I mean clean off the stencil You have to kind of not move it when you take it off. But what I mean is this page right here. Let's see if this page gets a design as well from absorbing the inside right there. Let me know if you've ever tried coffee dyeing like this. But thank you so much for watching today. And I will talk to you next time. Bye, everyone.